Hello everybody, William Jordan here. So today we're going to talk about stock charts, mostly because when you look at TV shows or when you think of traders or you see um, news um, media about traders and you see these stock charts behind them, they look quite daunting and quite complicated to comprehend, but they're actually very easy to get a grip of once you know the basics behind them. So we're going to start by introducing a couple of them and further down the road we'll talk about basic um, formations in stock charts. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So the first of the charts we're going to be looking at are line charts, which are the most basic form of charts when trading. The chart is made up of dots that represent the closing prices of a certain stock or index over a certain time period. A line is drawn to connect the dots, which gives you the line chart. Now, because of the simplicity and lack of detail in them, line charts are not the best when trading. However, they are good to give you a quick basic overview of a stock you are considering to trade. Line charts are better when it comes to investing over longer periods of time. For me personally, I looked at line charts when I was investing, but that was just to get a quick overview, a basic overview of a, of a company I was considering buying into over a certain time period. Then we get to bar charts or OHLC charts, which gives you a lot more information than line charts. OHLC basically stands for open, high, low and close charts. Basically, you have a vertical bar representing the movements of a stock price over a certain time period. There are two dashes protruding from either side of the bar. The dash on the left represents the opening price of a stock and the dash on the right represents the closing price of said stock over the time period, whether it is a minute, an hour, a day, whatever. If the dash on the left is lower than the one on the right, it is a bullish bar or the price movement is going up. If the dash on the left is higher than the one on the right, it is a bearish bar or the price is going down. For example, we can see the opening price right here on the left. The stock price probably moved up to the high before going back down to the low, where it once again turned around as more buyers came in before closing right over here. So this automatically gives us more information on the stock we are considering buying. Then we have the candlestick charts. It is very similar to the bar chart, although it is constructed in a slightly different manner. It also has a thin vertical line representing the movement of the stock, bond or index. But to represent the opening and closing price of a stock, we have a much thicker red or green bar, which is called the body of the candle. Now, there are many different color codes for the bullish and bearish candles out there. It all depends on the company or website that you're using. But all you have to do is remember um, which color is bullish and which color is bearish. For me personally, I prefer the green for bullish candles and the red for bearish candles. Here we can compare the similarities between the bar from a bar chart and the candle from a candlestick chart. Opening price right over here. Left dash on the bar and top of the candle. Then the stock price rose to the tip of the wick before dropping to the low or tip of the bottom wick. Then as buyers came back in or short started cashing out, the price rose again to the closing right over here. The right dash on the bar or the lower end of the candle. Here you can see two charts, the bar chart and the candlestick chart, from the same stock over the same time period. You see the exact same information, just represented in two different charts. Quick history lesson. Moniisa Homa, also known as Sokyo Homa, lived from 1724 to 1803 and he was a rice merchant from Sakata in Japan and he traded on the Dojima rice market in Osaka. Now, until around 1710, you could only trade physical rice on the market. But then a system started to emerge where you could trade in coupons that promised <clears throat> a delivery of rice at a future date. Now, from this futures market, Moniza's business really started flourishing. And there are even stories that tell of a network of people he set up every six kilometers between um, Osaka and Sakata, which is a total distance of around 600 kilometers. And these people were there only to communicate market prices. Moniza also wrote the first book on market psychology in 1755. The book is called The Fountain of Gold, The Three Monkey Record of Money. 
Monisa today is known as the father of candlestick charting since he was the one that created the first bar chart system and from the bar chart system we derived candlestick charting. Now when you're looking at a candlestick chart you can see different patterns that are being formed and patterns that are being repeated and from those patterns you can start to create strategies when you're trading. Now let's see how candlesticks work and have a deeper look into certain of the candlestick formations. To understand candlesticks we have to talk about sentiment. Obviously the red candles are bearish and the green candles are bullish. Bearish simply means that the bears are in control, that there are more sellers than buyers and they push the prices lower. Bullish is the exact opposite. The bulls are in control, more buyers than sellers are in the market at that, at that um, time and the prices are getting pushed higher. In the smaller candle, even though the prices dropped and the bears were in control, the prices did not drop as far as in the larger candle. So the larger candle is considered more bearish. Same with the green or bullish candles. In the larger one, the prices went up much higher. So the larger green candle is more bullish than the smaller one. Now there are certain situations where sentiment isn't all that straightforward. For instance, Let's take a look at these candles over here. The first candle has a green body but a very long wick at the top. The prices opened here and the bulls pushed the prices all the way to the tip of the wick before the bears kicked in driving the prices down to the close of the candle right over here. So from this you can see that even though it is a green candle it probably has a more bearish sentiment behind it. Of course, it all depends a lot about the context in which you find these candles. But for now, let's just say that this is a more bearish candle. Same with the second candle. Even though it has a red body, it has a very long wick at the bottom. The prices opened up right over here and the bears pushed the prices all the way to the tip of the wick right over here. Before the bulls kicked back in, driving the prices up again to the close of the candle right here. So even though this is a red candle, there is probably a bit more bullish sentiment behind it. Now in the third candle, the prices opened up right here for that time frame and the bears pushed the prices down to the lows. The bulls then came back in strong, driving the prices up to the highs before the sellers came back into the market and driving the prices lower once again to the close. So even though this candle has a green body allowing the bulls a slight victory, the bearish and bullish sentiment is almost the same, meaning that this candle, depending once again on the context, has an almost neutral sentiment. The fourth candle has basically the same layout as the third candle, except that the opening and closing prices are the same, meaning that this candle has a definitive neutral sentiment. So to sum up, depending on the context of course, the degrees of bullish and bearish sentiment isn't the same for all candles of the same color. So one should not only be looking at the size and the color of the candle bodies, but also at the size of the wicks. From that you can deduct which candles are more bullish, which candles are more bearish and which candles are more neutral. All of this will give you some kind of a head start when reading candlestick charts. So here I gave you the basics of what charts are and how to use them as well as a brief introduction to candlesticks and market sentiment. Of course, I know there's so many other different aspects of charts out there. There's point and figure charts as well. All of those we'll get into in future videos. But for now, the information I gave here is already a good start for people that are looking into technical analysis when considering a career in trading. So, um, all of that being said, I want to thank you guys out there so much for watching. If you like my content, remember, give, leave me a thumbs up. I would appreciate it. It will help out my channel. This was William Jordan from the Moneymaker channel. See you all in the next video.